Welcome to Electron Line. Now here's a good example to help us solidify or to help us solidify understanding of the coefficient of restitution. So here's the same example that we used before. We have two objects of different masses approaching one another. The one on the left with mass m at 8 meters per second to the right. The one on the right with mass 2m is moving to the left at minus 2 meters per second. One second later they collide they were 10 meters apart initially, they're approaching each other, the approach velocity would be 10 meters per second, they meet each other one second later. The center mass, notice, has moved from 14 and 2 thirds meter to 16 meters, which means it's moving to the right at 4 thirds meters per second. What we're going to do is calculate the initial and final kinetic energies, the initial and final kinetic energies relative to the center of mass, the coefficient of restitution, the coefficient of restitution squared, the ratio of the final to initial kinetic energy but relative to the center mass, and then the fraction of the energy lost, again relative to the center mass reference frame, which should be 1 minus c squared. And just for comparison, we'll also will calculate the actual energy lost when we use the kinetic energies with reference to the stationary Earth. All right, initial kinetic energy, that would be equal to one-half our first mass m times id velocity squared, which would be 8 squared, plus one-half the second mass, which is 2m, times its velocity squared, that would be minus 2 quantity squared. This would be 64 divided by 2, which is 32, plus 4, which is 36m, m being the mass of the small objects and then 36 again that's just simply for reference. The kinetic energy final after the collision would be one half the mass times this velocity squared minus 2 squared plus one half times 2m times this velocity squared. That would be 9 plus 4 divided by 2 which is 2, 9 plus 2 which is 11m. So that's the before and after kinetic energy relative to a stationary Earth. Now we're going to calculate the before and after kinetic energies relative to the center of mass. So the center mass is moving to the right at 4 thirds, which means that here we get 1 half times m, 8 minus 4 thirds, that would be 6 and 2 thirds quantity squared plus 1 half times the large mass, and it's a closing velocity center mass would be 2 plus 4 thirds, that would be 3 and a third. And of course I ignored the negative sign, we can put the negative sign there if you like. And uh, let's see here, for that we need a calculator. So 3.3333, we square that, plus, that would be 6.6666666 squared divided by 2 equals, and I get 33 and a third. So I get 33 and a third times m. So that's the kinetic energy before the collision relative to the center mass. Now after the collision, we get 1 half times the mass times, we have to add this to the motion of the center mass to the right, that would be 3 and a third or minus 3 and a third quantity squared plus 1 half times 2m times this velocity relative to a moving center mass would be 3 minus 4 thirds, that would be 2 and 3 thirds, oh, 1 and 3 thirds, 1 and 2 thirds uh, squared. Let's see here, that would be 3 minus 4 thirds, yes indeed. And let's see what we get there. So we get 1.666666 squared at, and that would be plus 3.3333 squared divided by 2 equals, and I get 8 and a third. So here we have the kinetic energies relative to the moving center mass before and after the collision. Now let's calculate C. C is going to be equal to, and notice when we calculate C, we don't have to use the velocities relative to the center mass, we can simply use the velocities relative to the stationary Earth, which makes it a lot easier. In this case, C would be V1 final minus V2 final, take the absolute values, V1 initial minus V2 initial, take the absolute values. As long as we stay consistent, 
And so V1 final, that would be minus 2 minus 3. Take the absolute value divided by V1 initial would be 8 minus a minus 2. So this would be equal to 5 over 10, which is 0 0.5. So the coefficient restitution, always between 1 and 0, in this case 0.5. If we now square that, we get 0.5 squared, which is equal to 0.25, which is 25%. That means that relative to the center mass, 25% of the energy is retained, 75% of the energy is lost. The fraction of the energy lost, 1 minus e squared would be 1 minus 0 0.25, which is 0 0.75, which is 75%. So the coefficient of restitution squared gives us an indication of what percentage or what fraction of the energy is lost. Now let's do the comparison here. The kinetic energy final relative to center mass is 8 and a third. Divide by the kinetic energy before is 33 and a third. And sure enough, 8 goes into 32, that would be 4 times. And then 1 third goes into 4 thirds. Uh, again, 4 times. So this is 1 over 4 or 0 0.25, which is 25% which again, it shows that the energy retained relative to the initial energy is only 25%, which means 75% is lost. So this should give you a really good feel, a really good understanding of the coefficient of restitution. One last thing, let's go ahead and calculate the energy final relative to the energy initial in the rest or in the earth reference frame. So if we take kinetic energy final divided by kinetic energy initial fixed to the earth we get 30 oh not 30 i have turned around 11 m divided by 36 m which is equal to 0 0.306 or 30.6 percent so relative to the earth relative to the fixed reference system 30.6% of the energy was retained and a little bit less than 70% of the energy was lost. And that's how it's done.